The Z28 was brand new for 67, and this car, it still is. As we take a look at the what and whys of the 1967 Chevrolet Camaro Z28, maybe we need to pull the camera back a little bit and get an overview of how this car came to be. You see, Ford came out with this neat little car called the Mustang halfway through 64, and it turns out the public really wanted a long nose, short deck, affordable, sporty little coupe, and Ford could barely keep up with the demand. Mustangs sold by the hundreds of thousands, with power plants ranging from mundane inline six cylinders to the 390 V8 in 67. And because our friends at Chevrolet did not have a comparable car in their lineup, they were forced to hear the Ford dealer's ringing cash register every time a Mustang sold. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Chevrolet needed to do something quickly to win back the youth market that was buying up Mustangs left and right. So the Camaro was born. Chevrolet engineer Vince Piggins was tasked with making the new 67 Camaro a better car than the Mustang. And that meant getting involved with racing, which was a no-no at the time for Chevrolet. Mustangs were not only winning the hearts of buyers, they were also winning on racetracks, especially the Red Hot Trans Am series. Chevrolet was officially out of racing in 1966, but they realized they needed to get in the action to beat the running pony on the track as part of their strategy to win over customers. And while they already had the Super Sport package for straight line performance, the road race version required some different parts. So new was a Trans Am rulebook friendly 302 cubic inch V8, a hybrid using the crank of a 283 and the bore size of a 327. And this fit the 305 cube limit of the Trans Am rulebook and also made for a lightweight, high RPM performer. The factory rating was 290 horsepower, but race cars were tuned to well over 400 with 7,000 plus RPM capability. The street version featured 11 to 1 compression, it breathed through a holly carb, spun deep groove pulleys, and was bolted to a Muncie 4-speed transmission with a heavy-duty clutch. The car also featured a road race tuned suspension system with a 12-bolt rear axle suspended by mono leaf springs, but those were held in place with radius rods to help reduce the spring wrap and aid in traction. Wheels were 15-inch, the only 67 Camaro to receive them and power front disc brakes were mandatory. This new performance package was called the Special Performance Package, but that's not what you know it as today. The regular production order code for the Camaro Supersport was called Z27, but when this new package came out, they assigned it the next available number, or Z28, and the rest, well, that's it. Trans Am rules dictated that 1,000 consumer level cars be sold to qualify a car model for competition, but there were only 602 67 Z28s built. Chevrolet was able to slip some other 350 powered Camaros into a different class of SCCA racing, and they counted towards the 1,000 car minimum. Outside of the drivetrain, the 67 Z28 is a basic car with no air conditioning, no power windows, no fancy interior, just an AM radio and crank up windows. Outside, it had a flat hood, no spoilers, and didn't even have Z28 badges on the car. The only visual indicator that anything was going on were the two white stripes over the deep water blue paint on this car. Z28s were all business and no frills for simple, lightweight performance. This particular car is also interesting in the sense that it's unrestored and has only been driven just over 7,000 miles since it was new. It's been super detailed and polished, so it appears shinier than new, but the paint has been worn thin in spots and it has a few dings and chips here and there. But it remains a great example of a car that went head to head with the Mustang did very well in Trans Am racing and became a legendary American performance car even to this very day.
So the debate continues on leaving cars original, restoring them, or even over-restoring them. And there's good examples of all different types of conditions of cars here in the Brothers Collection. So what's your preference? Leave them alone or make them like new? Share your thoughts with us and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another episode of Muscle Car of the Week.